Hey everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. So in this, I'm going to be showing you how three different methods of blending and I'm going to be going through where each one is suit suitable for being used and I'll be at the end of it all working through using one of them, I'll be using one of them to create uh, an apple. So let's get started. Uh, here we shall be using, I'm going to get the marquee tool and on the new on the new layer i'm going to just create a circle here and i'm going to fill it with whatever background color that i have here i have this background color so i'm just going to click alt backspace and it's going to give me that ctrl d to deselect it and bring it in in there let me lock its transparency here uh, now to start out i'm going to get a brush tool and just define because I'm going to be creating the colors that I want to blend. So I'm just going to choose any random colors. There is no specific order. You can also choose any. You can even close your eyes and just choose any colors. So I'm going to use really colors that are, are very, very uh, different or similar. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's just go with this. And I'm going to duplicate this layer three times for, for kind of Look, let me just duplicate the layer a couple of times now the first method we're going to begin with okay, I'm going to look at transparency it's going to be the the, the smudging option with the smudging option I have a special brush that I use for it and I've made a video in the painting tutorial that I made earlier I made a video on how to use the smudging option the smudging brush so using the this brush I'll leave it in the description below or you can also check out this video by Gary V oh, sorry on that the one where I painted Gary V so I made a follow-up video on that again everything is there on how to create it if you're interested but what I'm going to do here is going I'm going to first of all bring up this brush and explain a few properties here when it has a strength of say two it's it's paint barely moves it moves very 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 little right and when it has a, a strength of very a high value so its strength its paint will move very far okay so when it's it's at two it will barely move okay so this is the this is a principle on which we blend and then we if you want to blend smooth edges you decrease the strength if you want to move the paint around you increase the strength this is how you do it okay so uh, when you when we are starting now if for example you notice that once you blend because this this brush kind is, is kind of ram heavy if you find that it's not working properly just go here to images and then change your image resolution to 72 if it's at 300 then it will be able to work properly okay so starting out this uh, image is kind of uh, first of all this this layer here we have we can just increase it but the problem with this the the, 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 the thing that i don't like about this brush is uh, it works destructively so what i mean is when you're painting with it it's like uh, you, you're making one final decision okay so it's whatever you you make you have to make your best your best decision and then work from there so you cannot really um you you cannot really make different like variations unless you duplicate the layer so which means here because here if you want some sometimes you can just make a new layer and paint but this for this brush that doesn't work so that's what i mean by it works destructively so whatever decision you make it's it kind of has to be a uh, final okay but this brush is very good when you're working with uh, with, the, with the skin tones and trying to paint uh, a seamless skin so if you're trying to go for realism for example this can be a very very good brush to go on with because it doesn't matter which colors you're using so as you can see for example here i have very very white colors and you can see the colors are moving all over the place so but this helps me to position the colors okay so anyway 
when you when you finish for example positioning where you want your colors to blend with each other then you can change your trans your strings maybe down to six and then you begin blending and that means that the colors are going to move very very slowly uh, and then they're going to blend with whatever is surrounding them so you can see here if i turn on the bottom layer this was out before and this is after okay and again uh, here i haven't I haven't even gone in detail you can you can blend this as much as you want so for example i want to decrease those reds okay i can decide to push in some greens there and, and attack it with some other light greens and these dark uh, blues over here and like that and then once i've reached where i want to and then i can now uh, kind of go in there and just blend it over and it, it, it will work uh, very very well and so this this is one of the methods that you can use to uh, blend your work very well okay so the next one the next one we have is the normal blending brush which is the mixer brush so the mixer brush which is this tool here in the fine br in the brushes it is this tool here so the mixer brush is uh, the second one that we have and uh, for this the way it works it has a very very uh, different approach to how it works but uh, let's for example duplicate this layer again to, uh, maybe twice or three times because i'm going to be demonstrating other uh, uses of it so for it it has a few a few things here so for example here you have this option where it says uh, uh, when for example you want to retain the color for example when you sample a color there and you want it to retain these values you leave this thing on but if you don't want you turn it off and then here you have a couple of options now to blend the first blend we're going to do is to use uh, a, a variation of so for example a very wet and very heavy mix and we're going to leave these values as they are and when you when you when you come here and try to blend okay so here i'm just getting these colors and blending like this so so this this can help you when if for example let me just and on the transparency transparency so here when you blend it gives you an abstract so this, this can be used when you want to come up with custom colors of your own which uh, kind of colors that you wouldn't easily so for example if you know what you're doing of course but if you if you know if you want to come up with uh, say a blend of different colors okay you can kind of come here and do that it, i've seen this being done in like traditionally when where people do this kind of thing okay and you can see now how it comes up with those kinds of values okay so if we for example load here and we we want to uh, begin working with say this area here and you're going it, it blends uh, it can blend also with uh, the colors there okay and and then once you're done with that for example you can increase your brush size to the to the diameter roughly the diameter of that and then sample it like that and then it will show up there now when you when you decrease your brush size and paint okay let me paint on a new layer here so and paint it will paint these bubbles thing is let me change the brush maybe to this one and then you paint so it will paint these things as bubbles so you can you can use it very in very many for example if you want to create a forest or if you want to create dense vegetation you can just create one leaf and then you you use this mixer brush and then you can use that okay uh but that's 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 one way of using it for example if you clip this mask onto this and uh, and you change so you can see that you can begin to play around with various things and okay you you sample the color there and you can begin to to even make cool effects on this okay so let's for example put it back here 
let's see this color and uh, decrease the spacing maybe and we are going we are now going to sample a color from here i'm going to sample this imagine uh, that for example not i'm sampling here to sample here for example and then turn this back on and when i come and paint so it's it's painting uh, let me change this to say dry and heavy load and you can see that it it paints those things like as if it's in 3d and you can create some very cool effects on uh, using this so it would not be very intuitive but but you can kind of blend with it okay so for example here i would have to put it back at maybe very wet for example and uh, increase its diameter and then just try to blend those colors it would not be very easy and it would be very time consuming because i doubt whether this brush was meant for this but it can do a, a relatively uh, okay job if you want to Again, if you want to create abstract shapes, but kind of blending colors close together. I learned using the, the smudging option, but now I normally rely on this one, which is the brushing option, the normal brush, where you get your soft brush. It's a normal brush, it's, it's, it doesn't depend on your brush, so you just click Alt and then you sample the area that you want and then blend. So here, when I'm doing that, is I uh, I always first of all low transparency. I always turn on my opacity. So I switch on because I'm using a tablet. I, I switch on the opacity here, and now I'm also starting to switch on the flow. So when I when I click, the kind the colors are kind of fair. They're not so much uh, harsh. Okay, so I see some people don't do it, so I, I don't know how they manage to blend without switching on those values. I don't know. Yeah, for me, I always do because I, whenever I see something in the beginning that I don't like, I always uh, change it. But what I like about this, besides the, uh, the thing, the simplicity and the fact that you only use brushes, it's, it's a, here you can, I've already kind of worked on this layer, but you can, for example, it work non-destructively. So versus these two methods are destructive. This one is not destructive. What I mean is you can add a new layer on top of it and then you do the same thing. So you get your brush and then just begin sampling. Okay, so, so you sample and then begin painting. Okay. So the thing is when you're done with this you can you, you can easily then go back and see what you didn't like or whether you even like the result of the painting or not so here what you do is you just click once here and then click like that's for example if i'm blending this i click on the transition there where it's transitioning into there and then i click like that and then just so if I, if I want this to blend with this, I'll click here and then I move towards that color while I'm blending towards the edges of that color. All right, so it, it's actually very easy to do. It's when, you, when you take time and study it, and if you see that you've done a mistake, you can just go over and blend over and then try to just blend those colors together. So for example, maybe I don't want those colors to look so different so far apart and i want to explore maybe more vivid colors you can just clip another layer onto it then turn off this layer and then go back to work again okay so now this time maybe decide to use a, a hard brush or maybe decrease you maybe use this brush but just increase its hardness a little bit okay and because i want to explore maybe trying to kind of finely blend those colors like but i want to retain some sense of color besides the or the just 
what's happening on it so so here you have this for example and when you turn on you have two options okay i'm now going to demonstrate this i'm going to paint this uh, apple here i'm going to be doing the i'm going to be doing the normal blending and but i'm going to begin now sketching the the proportion and everything so uh, again it's still practice for me i can understand form but i'm still struggling when it comes to uh, getting my uh, values right so yeah i but i'll try as much as possible to get as close as I can to the real uh, values of color and stuff. There are a lot of things to learn and as you can see for example my form is off and everything but but when you practice it gets better with time so it's much better that you kind of practice the other thing that I want to do is to add those speckles, spe specular speckles. So I'm going to create a very small just kind of size because I see they are kind of they're kind of round and contradict. They are kind of round, so I'm going to create a very small brush like that. Give it a color backspace so it's just that so a new layer and then with my selection tool click alt and just distribute different areas just like that so just distribute a few maybe like that much and then just click on any of them and uh, change their size by scaling them down to make smaller smaller versions so distribute them in a in a in a sense that makes it feel you know, more uniform a little bit or something and then uh, save it as a, a brush so define brush preset and i'm going to call it spec specs whatever Specs, speckles, blah blah, and now we can close that. Eh, no, it doesn't matter. So, what now I want to do is to create a new layer on top of this, and I'm going to clip it onto that layer below. Okay, so once I clip it, now I can uh, can go and get my brush. So here. And then move down there and you'll have your speckle brushes so you can see that the brush is there as well the eyedropper is yeah. now with that layer selected I'm going to just click one area and then just uh, put it at a hundred and then just begin uh, dropping points the other thing that you can do is to go into the brush presets so this is the brush you created you can tilt it you can space it okay okay but well, i'm going to add a texture and i'm going to add scattering to it after that uh, you you go onto this layer and change its blending mode maybe you can change it to overlay or uh, soft light whatever you want so you can just change it until you find a version that you like so i like i like this color color dodge although it's very very harsh so maybe i'll experiment by putting it down so for the shadow i'm going to use the normal brush which is that brush and how i'm going to make a shadow there is i uh, 
to bring up this again. Oh, I need the shadow, but the shadow can't. Shadow is not black. It's because the shadow is the same color as that area there. So what I'm going to do is to just tap once right there, and it creates uh, that kind of uh, area which looks like a shadow. Finally, maybe we can just, just do one overall pass to it. This is all that I had for you today. So uh, let me know if you found value in this or if you have any other methods that you, you consider that work best for you. And I'll be uh, very, very happy to hear from you. So this is all I had for you today. Just go create, store some, be amazing. Till next time. Peace.